so today we will be discussing about the mechanism of hormone action how hormone is uh, acting at the level of cells or level of tissues that is what we will be discussing today and this is an important topic also as far as your examination also sometimes you may get five mark question on the basis of this given account of what of hormonal action so here you can see that hormones produce their effect on target tissue by binding to specific proteins called hormonal receptor located in the target tissue so target tissue means the tissue on which the hormone is making its effect that tissue is known as a target tissue so in this of every hormone there will be some tissues or some cells on which it is acting and no normally what we are seeing is that on the surface of these cells there will be certain type of protein and these proteins are known as hormone receptor so function of this hormone receptor is that on board hormone receptor will be uh, here it may be a uh, hormone receptor will be usually uh, uh, attaching with the hormone i will show you a picture of this so here you may be able to see how this hormone receptor see here you can see that so on the surface of every cell there will be certain regions and these regions are known by the name hormone receptors here you can see that these are the hormone receptors so on the surface of every cell so hormones will be attaching with see this is the hormone receptor so hormones will be attaching with these receptors so that is how the first step in the hormone action is going on and hormone receptors present on the cell membrane of the target cell here you can see that this is the hormone receptor and in this picture also you can find there is a hormone receptor this is the hormone receptor then uh, on the uh, hormone receptor present on the cell membrane of the target cell are called membrane bound receptors so what we are finding here is a membrane bound receptor why it is attached to a membrane or attached to the cell membrane so such a receptors are known by the name membrane bound receptor and and the receptors present inside the target cell are called intracellular receptor here sometimes certain receptors are present inside the cell this is outside the cell some may be present inside the cell in the cytoplasm they are called as the intracellular receptor so in the is of hormone receptors we are finding two different type one is extracellular receptor or membrane bound receptor other is present inside that which we call by the name intracellular receptor now binding of a hormone to its receptor leads to the formation of hormone receptor complex here you can see that see when a hormone this is the hormone and uh, is attaching with this receptor that will be forming a, a, a com uh, complex that complex is known by the name hormone receptor complex so it is a product formed by the combination of a hormone and a receptor i will show you how a hormone receptor complex is here so here you can see that the how the hormone receptor complex will be appearing see this is how the hormone receptor complex will be present normally see here you can see that so a hormone and the receptor this is the hormone and the, this is a steroid hormone and this is the receptor and this complex is known by the name hormone receptor complex see this is how the mechanism is going on and each receptor is specific to one hormone only and the receptors are specific here you can see that this receptor can only bind with this type of hormone so receptors are highly specific 
and hormones can only bind with a certain type of receptor. A hormone cannot bind with any type of receptor. It can only bind with the one particular type or a specific type of receptor. And because of that, we say the hormonal receptors are highly specific. Then here we can see this is the receptor present inside the cytoplasm known as intracellular receptor. This is the type of receptor present on the outside or on the membrane which we call with the membrane bound receptor. So different type of receptors are the and hormone receptor complex formation leads to certain biochemical changes in the target tissue. Target tissue metabolism and physiological functions are regulated by the hormone. See what is happening is that when a hormone is binding like this, that will be producing some effect inside the cytoplasm or inside the cell as well as on the membrane or the cytoplasm, uh, membrane of the cell and that is what is indicated here. Then hormone which interact with the membrane bound receptor normally do not enter, in, enter the target cell but generate second messengers within. Here you can see that this is one type of receptor but it is present inside the cytoplasm. Here this is another type of receptor known as membrane receptor and this is the hormone. So what we are seeing in the first case is that hormone is directly entering into the cytoplasm. But here hormone is not entering into the cytoplasm. What, what they are doing is that this binding of hormone with this receptor result in the development of another molecule which we call as the second messenger. So that is known as second messenger. Here also you can see the picture of a second messenger. See when hormone is attaching with this receptor that will be leading to the formation of another molecule known by the name second messenger. Here you see the Psi AMP which means cyclic AMP. In most of the cells the CAMP or cyclic AMP is uh, considered as the second messenger. So when this binding is taking place there will be the development of this uh, cyclic AMP by this reaction and we will come to that. So that is the, what is happening. The hormone interacts with the membrane bound receptors normally do not enter into the target cell but they only uh, create a second messenger that is controlling the metabolism. So that is so that is this hormone is not directly entering into the cytoplasm as we are seeing here. There is no direct entry into the cytoplasm only only by means of the cyclic AMP it is entering the it is controlling the metabolism. Then what we are seeing the second messenger uh, usually cyclic AMP calcium ions or inositol triphosphate. There are three different type of uh, second messenger. It can be either cyclic AMP, calcium ions or inositol phosphate. So these are the different type of uh, second messengers uh, which are producing their effect on the uh, cellular metabolism. So here you can see that and so the second messengers are three different types. Present in the cell membrane are receptors called G protein and adenyl cyclase. The G proteins are associated with the GDP. Here you can see that in the uh, there are this is a G protein and adenyl cyclase. It is this G protein and adenyl cyclase which help in the formation of cyclic AMP. So that is the importance of G protein and cyclic uh, adenyl cyclase. Uh, G protein and adenyl cyclase will be helping in the formation of cyclic AMP. And uh, hormone forms a complex with the receptor protein causing a change in the shape uh, due to which it comes in contact with the G protein. See when, uh, when this binding of hormone, when this binding of hormone with this small uh, receptor protein is take, uh, taking place, that will be changing the structure or shape of this G protein. As a result, this reaction will be, as a result of that, this GTP will be attaching with this G protein. So that is the importance of that. Hormone forms a complex with the receptor protein, causing a change in the shape 
due to which it comes in contact with the G protein. It interacts with the G protein changing GDP to GTP. See what they are telling? When this binding is taking place, the shape of G protein will be uh, modified and as a result this GDP, GTP will be, GDP will be converted into GTP. See here uh, there is a GDP molecule that will be changed into GTP. So that is what is happening as a result of that. G protein now activates adenyl cyclase that converts ATP to cyclic AMP. Here you can see that as a result of that this G protein will be stimulating or activating this enzyme known by the name adenyl cyclase. It is this adenyl cyclase that is helping in the formation of cyclic AMP from ATP. So here for this ATP to cyclic AMP we need an enzyme and that enzyme is known by the name adenyl cyclase. In order to stimulate that GTP, G protein is needed. So and for that GTP is needed. So that is how this uh, reaction is going on in a chain like way. The cyclic AMP activates kinase enzyme which triggers intracellular biochemical changes like enzyme activation, secretion, ion cha channel changes and these biochemical changes result in the physiological or developmental effect. See here you can see that. This is a cyclic AMP that will be activating the protein kinase, another type of enzyme. And that protein kinase when it is activated, it will be activating a series of specific enzymes. These enzymes will be finally acting on the substrate, substrate and later converting it into the final product. So in any uh, hormonal action, this is the ultimate effect. Hormone action will be normally resulting in the conversion of one substrate into product. For that one enzyme is needed. That enzyme is actually activated by the hormone. That is when this hormone is entering the site um, uh, and there is uh, attaching with this uh, receptor, the final reaction is this conversion of some, some substance, some substrate into some product. And that is the ultimate reaction. And for that, one enzyme is needed. In order to activate that en enzyme, this hormone must bind with this receptor. So when then one hormone is binding with the receptor, normally hormone is directly, directly not entering into the cytoplasm. That will be causing the development of another molecule known by the name cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP through an enzyme system known by the name protein kinase will be activating the specific enzyme responsible for converting that particular substrate into a product. So this is how uh, that is. Hormone uh, is not, di uh, di for example, I am, I want to tell your um, botany teacher or your Vargis or some message. I can directly call him. That is one way. It is a direct message. I can tell you that sir, please, please inform this message to you. That is a second way. So that is the approach of hormone is doing. It is not directly conveying the message. It is using another molecule. That molecule is known by the name cyclic AMP. So hormones are required in a very small amount. So that is one advantage. Hormones are not produced in large quantity. Only in very tiny quantity, most of these hormones are produced as a single activated molecule. Because a single activated molecule produces a lot of cyclic AMP and this process is known as signal amplification. That is, even though here you can see that if maybe one uh, hormone is here, but that single hormone can produce maybe 100 cyclic AMP. One hormone one is not producing only one cyclic AMP. It is actually producing several cyclic AMP and that process is known as signal amplification. Okay, so for example, I am telling a message to you. You are 10 students are there. So it is multiplying 10 times. The same effect is here. Okay, so hormone uh, when it is binding with that, it will be causing the formation of several cyclic AMP. So that process is what we call by the name signal amplification. Hormones which interact with the 
intracellular receptor. So, for example, steroid hormone. What are intracellular receptor? We have already, I have already shown a picture somewhere here. That is the intracellular, this is the intracellular receptor. So, this type of receptors are known as intracellular receptor. So, in the case of intracellular receptor, what we are seeing, uh, some examples are steroid hormones, iodothyronines. They mostly regulate the gene expression or chromosome function by the interaction of hormone receptor complex. See, here you can see that. What they are doing, they will be influencing these uh, genes or the chromosomes. So, it is by influencing the genes or the chromosome, intracellular receptors are producing their effect. So, that is the mechanism in the use of intracellular, whereas in the use of second and extra membrane bound receptor, they produce second messenger and through a changes in the enzyme activity or through kinase system, they will be producing the uh, formation of certain product. So, this is the mechanism that we are finding in the case of intracellular as well as extracellular receptor and uh, cumulative biochemical action result in physiological or development. So, when hormone is uh, uh, producing certain effect that will be ultimately changing the uh, metabolic function or physiological function of the body. So, this is how the hormones is producing its effect and this is known as the hormone mechanism or hormone action mainly by the help of second another molecule or a mediating molecule known as the second messenger.